Hi, welcome to MyTech's virtual training for automation equipment. If you find this session helpful, please encourage your colleagues to watch the recording and to attend future live events. The best way for anyone to find out about free training like this is by subscribing to our newsletter. The newsletter also includes user tips, software updates, retrofits, and much more. A recording of the training about to take place, plus many other operating and maintenance videos, can be viewed on our YouTube channel. This recording will be posted by the next day, so please forward it to anyone who might benefit. While you're on YouTube, go ahead and browse our automation playlists to see what other videos can help your team become more efficient. Subscribe to the channel today and turn on notifications to be notified when we post new content. We also have a website where you can locate the part numbers you need to order using our easy to use interactive parts guides. There are also equipment manuals and service bulletins there, troubleshooting and safety information an overview of our in-house training, as well as anything you want to know about new equipment. Okay, about today's training. During this session, use the Q&A window to ask questions as they come up, and we'll answer them in that same window as quickly as possible. You can find these helpful links in the Q&A window also. Now, let's get started with this week's virtual training. Today we're going to talk about finding the propy bus problem. So we see that we have an error up here on our screen, and all these encoders are red. What's happened here is that we have a break somewhere in the circuit. The way this circuit works is that every encoder starts with the feed and it goes all the way through this circuit, all the way through here, and ends with this last one right here. If there's a break anywhere in that circuit, what we see is everything on that screen is red. So the easiest way to determine where your break is at is we're going to do what's called half-stepping. We're going to take it and we're going to split this machine in half and we're going to see is our problem down here on the stationary end or is it down here on the carriage end. So what we've done to make that a little bit easier for you is we, we, we have put what's called a terminator at the very end of the circuit. That's this little guy right here. So if we unscrew that, we pull that out, we can move this around and we can take it down to the other end of the saw and plug it in to where it goes to the opposite from where it starts feeding the other side so that the only thing we see is all the encoders on this side. So let's do that. And so what you'll see is that we've got a long purple wire that's, that's all coiled up. This is what's feeding the other side of the saw. So we're going to unscrew this connector. We're going to use this terminator that I talked about, and we're going to put it into here. Simply by turning it real slowly, it'll fall right into place. If you're forcing it, you're probably doing something wrong, and you're going to damage the pins on the end, on the, the cord itself. So let's go take a look at that screen again. So now we see everything on this side of the screen is green. So that tells us that our problem is not on the stationary end any longer, okay? So we're going to start working our way down on this side of the machine, the traveling end, and see where our problem has occurred. Our next step is going to be, we're going to find the cable that's coming through this track right here, and we're going to disconnect it. What we're doing here is we're making sure that this cord that goes from one end of the machine to the other end of the machine has not been damaged. So I simply screw my connector, the cable that's coming from the other end of the machine. If I look at my touch screen over here, I still have everything green on the stationary end of the saw. So that tells me that my cable is working. So now I can start figuring out where's my problem at on, the, on this side of the saw. So now that I know that this cable here has not been damaged, I'm going to reconnect it. The next thing I want to do is I want to add a couple more of these encoders into the circuit and see if I can get some more of them to turn green for me. 
that will add in my angle, my center line five, and also my hold down end corners. So now if we look at the screen, we'll see that those four end corners are working. So we're down to five end corners that we have to figure out where's our problem at. So I can connect these two wires back together. I'm going to add in these last two encoders and see if maybe it was just a loose connection. Now we see that we've got two encoders that are red, that everything's good in this circuit. Remember, it runs from one to the next, to the next, to the next, all the way through. And right now what we've done is we've plugged it off all the way to center line three. So there's no flow going to number to angle three or the carriage, okay? So we're going to move the plug and we're going to put it back down here on the carriage and see if everything starts working again. If it doesn't, then we know that our problem is either a problem with the carriage encoder or it's a problem with the angle encoder. So as we see, we were we had two encoders that were left and only one of the two is probably bad. In this case, it looks like it's my carriage encoder that's the one that's faulty. But what I actually found is a cable that the pins had gotten twisted on it. This happens when you don't seat it properly and you force it together. So if it doesn't fall right into place, this is what happens is that these pins get twisted and you get a bad connection. So after replacing the cable, now everything's back to being green. Hello, I'm Glenn Davis. I'm with My Tech Industries, and I'd like to talk to you about preventive maintenance, and then we'll go on to a second section and cover encoder faults today. And our, this is just an overview of the machine, kind of giving you a whole idea of what everything looks like. But one thing we want to do is we want to start with checking our air pressure, making sure that we have 100 pounds of PSI available. Uh, we want before, probably before we turn the air on in the machine, it's probably a good idea to take a look at the lubricator, make sure that our oil levels are filled up and that our water catcher has not filled up or if need be, we could drain it. Next thing we want to do, just for safety reasons, we want to go around and push each e-stop in one at a time. And if the e-stops are working correctly, if you view the monitor, you will see that it will show you exactly which e-stop has been pushed in. If it doesn't show that and it shows you a control power interrupt, then we're going to need to call MyTech and get some help on that to get it fixed. The next thing we want to do is we want to start each saw blade individually and we want to stop it and make sure that it stops within three seconds. Number five and number six blades are a little bit bigger, so they're going to take a little bit longer to stop, but it should be within three to four seconds. We want to walk around the machine and make sure that all of our guards are in place and that they're secure. We also would like to take a look at saw blades and make sure that none of them are chipped or missing teeth. Dullness and pitch build bulk and warping, we need to take a look at that as well. If they're, the easiest way to notice if a saw blade is warped in any way is when it slows down. You really don't notice it so much while it's running at full speed. But as it's slowing down, you'll notice it wobble if it's been warped. Inspect the saw once again for any damage or loose met, missing parts. And about every two hours, we've got some preventive maintenance that we're going to need to do. We're going to work, we're going to be greasing our bearings. We've got several pillow block bearings that are on this machine, and there's some chains and some shafts that we're going to need to blow down, and we're going to need to clean them off or lubricate. Let's see if we can get a view of some of those. Here's some of the cleaning supplies that we're going to use, a rag, some gloves to protect your hands. Of course, we always want to do lockout, tagout procedure. Our lubricating mix, when we get to the mixture, that's going to be a 1 to 10 mix with oil and kerosene. But starting with the bearings, we just want to give these smaller bearings, as you see in the picture to the right, maybe one small squirt of grease once a week. I don't think we need to do this any more than once a week. Um, 
if we over grease them, we ruin the seals on them and it uh, just kills them too quickly. There are some larger bearings on the machine that are going to require a little bit more grease, which is where we see that in this picture right here. These bearings that are for the drive shaft, that square drive shaft at the back of the machine, they're a little bit bigger bearings, so they're probably going to need to have a little bit more grease. And again, about once a week is fine. The shaft itself, it's a great idea if you clean it with a rag, and then when you're done, you're going to screw it down with some sort of a lubricant. Here's some more bearings. Now, these bearings here in this picture, you don't see these bearings unless you take the orange guards off of them. So this is one spot where you would need to take the guards off in order to get to the bearings. Again, the smaller bearings, we're going to hit them with about one shot of grease a week. The larger bearings, you might want to hit them a little bit more than that, we'll say two shots of grease. These are our chains that drive the lumber through the saw. The top ones are called our hold down chains and the bottom ones are the infeed conveyors. What I'd like to do when I'm servicing the machinery is I run my conveyor at about 20% speed and I blow both of these conveyors, all the chains and everything down while it's running with an air hose. When, it's, when I know that it's gone all the way around and I've cleaned it out thoroughly, then I'm gonna go back at it and I'm gonna spray that oil and kerosene mix or some spiral lube to keep it lubricated. And we like to do that about every two hours. The next thing we want to be looking at is we want to take a look at our, at our slides on the quads, okay? So the slide is the shiny surface and the, the casting is the part that goes around that slide. We want to blow it off. It's not a bad idea to wipe it down with a rake and kind of inspect it to see, make sure that there, it's not getting any kind of pits or damage and anything going on with that slide before it gets too late. Once again, we're gonna lubricate this about every two hours with spiral lube or oil mix. This is a view of the angle casting in slide and it, it needs to be blown off and wiped off as well. You wanna get inside of that casting with your rag so you can feel for any kind of impurities and catch it before it becomes a problem. Again, we wanna lubricate this about two times every couple of hours with that mixture that we talked about. These chains here is important. They get filled up with sawdust and it will make that chain get real, real tight on us and it makes it hard for it to run back and forth. So while it's in a, in a cleaning position, you want to blow those chains out real good so that they look as clean and pretty as they are in this picture that you're seeing. Same thing with the Acme rod, that screw that's be in the back of the photo right there for the, for the quad to move up and down. We want to blow it off as well and make sure that we're getting all that sawdust out of here so that it's not getting caught up in the... Uh, the nut that it goes through. This long drive shaft, as we talked about earlier, it's a great idea to just kind of run down that thing with a rag, and when you're done with it, spray it down with the lubricant, then you should be ready to run after that. Hope you enjoyed that. Let's, uh, let's talk about some encoder sh troubleshooting. So on our encoder circuit here, when we watched the video, what we seen was that we only had one green encoder that was shown on the screen and everything else was red. And this is common. Anytime that we get a break anywhere in the circuit, it's going to make it look like all the encoders are having a problem. And what it is, it's just a break in the circuit. And we have to determine how can we find that break in the circuit. So at the end of the circuit on the carriage, we have what's called a terminator. And that's this little plug that I'm showing you that's screwed in at the very, very last cable. So what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew that cable and take it out from the carriage and we're going to walk it down to the stationary end of the saw. And right by where the air plugs into the saw, there's a, there's a purple cable that's coiled up and it connects to one of the encoders, the very last one on the stationary end side of the stationary end of the saw. So we're going to unscrew that. When we plug it in, as we see in the picture here, this black mark that's there, that's that terminator I just showed you. So now we see all these purple lines right here. We've made a good connection and everything flows through and we're not having any kind of a break at that side of the machine. So that tells me that there's no problem going on with any of the encoders on the stationary end of the machine. The next thing I wanna do though, is I wanna make sure that that cable that travels from end to end on the machine has not been damaged. It is, so, it is subsequent to damage because it's traveling back and forth through a, a flexible track so we just want to make sure 
that it's working correctly. And what we'll do is we're going to move that terminator down to the other side of the saw before it connects to any of the other encoders. All that looks good. So we'll, again, what we're doing is what I call half stepping. We're just going to keep adding half the circuit back in. So our next step is you'll notice that we're going to move that terminator over one more time. And now we've added in four more encoders and those are all great. So now we know all these encoders so far are not the problem. We still have, uh, looks like five more encoders to go to narrow it down to where the problem is. We're doing pretty good, man. We're down to two encoders now after I moved the terminator. So our problem at this point in time is one of these two encoders. As you've seen in the video, what I found was one of the cables had pins that had gotten damaged. And that was the cable that was going from angle three and that was causing it that it wouldn't let anything else work when we had that terminator at the very end. When we have it all fixed, it looks like this. The flow is consistent all the way through and our terminator is back at the end where we started at. Now we're ready to get back into production. If you have more questions or if you're looking for parts, we have parts guides on our website at www.mytech-us.com. Um, feel free to give us a call if you're not sure of what you need to do. And we've been more than happy to support you on troubleshooting your machinery at 800-523-3380. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.